Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be going through the whole of NXL GCSE Physics Conservation of Energy. Now this is a really short topic, so this is going to be a really quick video, and this is because there's only a couple of key points you need to know. If you'd like to follow along with this video, over on my website you can download my notes and flashcards. Okay, so the first thing we need to know about energy is that it cannot be created or destroyed. And this is a really important law in physics called the conservation of energy. We cannot make new energy and we cannot get rid of energy. Energy can only be transferred between stores. And there's a lot of energy stores that you need to know about. The first is thermal energy. So if we're trying to heat something up, energy is being transferred into its thermal store. The next is kinetic energy. So if something starts to move, energy is being transferred into the kinetic store. The next is gravitational potential energy and elastic potential. And this is both when energy is being built up, ready for something to happen. So GPE is if you start lifting something off the ground, when you let go it starts to fall really quickly. The next is chemical and magnetic energy. And then we have electrostatic and nuclear energy. You've probably heard of most of these words, maybe apart from electrostatic. And this is just energy between two opposite charges, so positive and negative. So let's explain energy transfers by rolling a ball up a hill. As the ball begins to roll, we transfer energy into its kinetic store, so it starts to move. As it reaches the top of the hill, energy is transferred into the GPE store, as it's getting ready to fall back down. And then as it starts rolling back down the hill, energy is transferred back to kinetic energy. Now, there are two calculations you need to know, and this is how to calculate kinetic energy and GPE. So to calculate kinetic energy, we do 0 0.5, times mass times velocity squared so kinetic energy is measured in joules 0 0.5 is a number so it has no units mass is measured in kilograms and velocity is measured in meters per second now to find the change in GPE which is just what we started with compared to what we end with we do the mass times the gravity times the change in height GPE is measured in joules, mass is measured in kilograms, gravity is measured in newtons per kilogram, and gravity on Earth is 10 newtons per kilogram, and height is measured in meters. Now, efficiency is how good a machine is at transferring energy into useful stores. And this word useful is really important. It's the energy we really want. So let's look at a phone. As we charge the phone, we transfer electrical energy. And this is used in three main ways. It can then be transferred into light. And this is as the phone screen starts to light up. It can also be transferred into sound. So as we play music or watch videos, sound comes out of the phone. And then phones can also get hot, so it can be transferred into heat. Now, light and sound are both useful stores. We want our phone to light up and we want it to make noise. But we don't want our phone to get hot. So heat is the wasted energy. Now we can calculate efficiency by dividing the useful energy by the total energy. So let's say we transferred 100 joules of electrical energy. And then 60 joules was transferred to light, 30 joules into sound, and then 10 joules to heat. So our light and sound are useful, so that makes up 90 joules. And then the heat is wasted, which is 10 joules. Now if we do the useful energy, so 90, over the total energy, which was the 100 we put in, we get 0 0.9. So this phone has an efficiency of 0 0.9. Now efficiency will always be below 1, because if it's not, it means it's 100% efficient, and nothing in the world is that efficient. Now we can draw Sankey diagrams to visualise efficiency. So these show how much energy is useful, and how much energy is wasted. So we put the energy that went in over here, so the 100 joules goes here. The arrow going straight across is the useful energy, so this is where our 90 joules goes. And then the arrow going down is the wasted energy, so this is 10 joules. Now this is a scale diagram. So this means the size of the arrows represents the size of the energy. So the arrow for 90 joules is much bigger than the arrow for 10 joules. Now humans can generate energy in two ways. It can be non-renewable or renewable. So non-renewable energy is mainly generated by the fossil fuels, so oil, coal and natural gas. Now these are really good because they provide a lot of energy. If we just burn a small amount of coal, we can get lots of energy. 
but they're really bad for the environment, so they're contributing to polluting the earth and global warming. Now, some ways of getting renewable energy is through solar, wind and hydroelectric. Now, these are good because they're much better for the environment, but they can be really expensive. It's a lot cheaper to burn a lump of coal than set up an entire wind farm. If this video helped with your physics revision, please subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos I have.